Welcome to the next episode of Rookie Sailor, where I learn how to sail, fix the boat, travel the world, and live on a budget. In the last episode, we talked about purchasing Sunburst. I showed you a bunch of photographs, explained how I had searched everywhere, and then we did a water trial, splashed it into the water, and now the paperwork is final. I've signed. I now own Sunburst. And there she goes. Time for me to get familiar with the boat, learn all the electrical systems, learn all the valves and storage tanks, and make sure everything is functioning properly. Check out the electronics. <laughs> I've never even used a boat before. I've never even sailed before. I have no idea except for what I've learned on the web watching YouTube videos. But here it is, coming over to my dock, where I'm going to spend the month doing repairs and learning as much as I can. I live in Kima, Texas, so that means I have to travel 1,300 nautical miles to get the boat back home. In this episode, I'll show you the places I've stopped, the miles that I went, the days that I've spent out, overnight over the water and even a couple of rookie mistakes so uh, believe it or not well maybe you do would for a rookie taking that big of a trip uh i even had to get a tow it's a little different in the water but it's all in this episode <laughs> even though i wasn't planning on doing a video blog i still got some video of some of the, the action The day has finally arrived. I'm sitting at Fort Pierce, Florida, Harbortown Marina at the fuel dock at 7.30 in the morning, having coffee with the local captains and the dock master, anticipating my first trip navigating the channel. I've never done this before, but I did read the rules the night before. It was an exciting experience. The very first time in my sailboat, waves splashing against the bow, other boats coming into the channel, other boats coming around. So I head straight out into the ocean. Being a rookie, I decided the ocean was the best choice for me, rather than trying to navigate all the way down the intercoastal waterway, dealing with bridges and other boats and, and navigation markers and slow speed zones. So straight out into the ocean is where I went. But as you notice, you'll see that my navigation is, is uncalibrated. My compass is showing me all different directions, so therefore my electronic uh, chart plotter is also changing and spinning directions. And obviously, I had to figure out how to get this calibrated before I could continue on any further, because I'm going to rely very heavily on this electronics in order to get home. I mean, I really need to know where I'm headed. Well, I finally managed to get the chart plotter and compass and all my electronics calibrated. So then I traveled a, another 33 miles south along the coast of Florida, about eight miles from the coast. And it's about 1.25 p.m. And I took another video just to look around and see that there is nothing around. Uh, it's quite enjoyable. My electronics now working fine. The autopilot is turning the wheel by itself, and I'm just sitting aside enjoying the view. Of course, I'm still motoring. Um, I'm just a little shy about trying to throw up the sails, worried about uh, getting them ripped or, uh, you know, just uh, getting knocked overboard uh, if the sail shifts, because I, I haven't learned much yet. But, and besides, uh, there isn't much wind. 
I did take a little time to pull them up and uh, put them back down, but there wasn't enough wind, and I was being very cautious. So I'm motoring further on down the coast, and it's been sprinkling a little bit, so I decided I need to look at my chart plotter uh, for uh, an inlet that I can get into. I have a five foot draft, and so I have to make sure that there's a navigable inlet that I can get into. And do it during the daytime because at night you can't see these channel markers, or at least I can't by myself. If I had someone on the bow with a big spotlight, it might help. But uh, being single handed, uh, you have to plan way ahead and you have to think everything through. So I decided on Riviera Beach City Marina, called ahead. They had a slip available for two nights. So using my cell phone, I went ahead and paid for it with a credit card and called it a day. I had traveled 35 nautical miles on my first day at sea. After staying a couple of nights at the Riviera Beach City Marina, uh, I went ahead and fixed, resealed a hatch on deck that I discovered was leaking. And I went ahead and did some laundry. And then I headed out the next morning. And about 10 a.m., three miles off the coast of West Palm Beach, Florida, it looked like a nice time to pull out the cell phone and take a video. The wind was blowing a little bit, but I was still a little scared to put those sails up just yet. I'm getting used to actually being on the water and and uh, operating a sailboat, well, motoring a sailboat. <laughs> but so far, I'm having a thrill. I'm loving it. Look at that blue sky, clouds. The problem is the wind is directly heading at me, coming from the south. So I guess that's called beating the wind. Uh, maybe that's if you got sails up. I don't know. But, but I'm heading directly into the wind, and I'm motoring. And I'm only making about six knots, five knots, but uh, I'm loving it just the same. I didn't realize it at the time, but I was only 60 miles from the coast of the Grand Bahamas. Wouldn't that have been nice? But of course, I didn't have my U.S. passport yet, so I wouldn't be able to go there anyway. So a little later in the day, about 35 more miles south, I uh, decided it was time for another video. I had a surprise. The dolphins came. After a little while, I turned off and, and they kept appearing occasionally. What a thrill for the day. I continued to motor on down the coast for the rest of the day, all night long, the next day, all day, all night the next night, and then finally the morning of the next day, extremely wore out, extremely tired. I motored in to what I think is the only place I can get to in the Keys, and that was Key West. I finally settled in at the Conk Harbor Marina. Rookie mistake number one. Make sure you know how to adjust your dock lines for high and low tides and extreme wind shifts. I suffered damage to my boat because I hadn't learned this lesson yet. Well, I know it now.
After spending a few days in Key West, I headed on north through the Northwest Channel into the Gulf of Mexico. I went all day, all night, and the next morning stayed at Marco Island, spent the night there, and then the next day, I decided it was time for another video. Late in the evening, I walked out and sat on the bow of the boat, enjoying the sound of the waves, looking around. I'm about 13 miles off the coast of Florida. Peaceful, wonderful. Times like this makes everything worth it. Later this night, I got boarded by the Coast Guard. After dark, 8 o'clock, they surprised me. I didn't have my radar on because I was sitting there watching everything. And they snuck up, right up to me. Two of them jumped aboard, deck to deck, gave me a full inspection, mostly interested in my builds. But I passed with flying colors. It took about an hour. After that, I continued on throughout the night and headed towards Sarasota, Florida. Early in the morning, very tired after going all day and all night without any rest, because I didn't trust sleeping yet. Rookie mistake number two happened. Looking at my chart plotter, it looked like Big Sarasota Pass was a great way of great place to get into the intercoastal waterway so i arranged at marina jacks to uh, take a mooring ball unfortunately i took the wrong route i planned my route carefully using my chart plotter but i didn't know it was out of date by a couple of years and i was supposed to enter this path but got stuck the sands had shifted and now there was only two foot in the middle of this channel so I ended up getting towed off and into the deep part of the channel and on my way it was a harrowing experience after getting pounded and pounded on the sandbar for about 45 minutes and laying on my side I was now proceeding on to Marina Jack Marina where they have mooring balls out front and lots of slips of course they were all full but I decided to spend a few days and recoup and gather my nerves i thought i'd lost my boat After sitting on the mooring ball for about five days, I had to make a couple of minor repairs to the to a few things after getting beaten on that sandbar. Uh, then I went over to the fuel dock, fueled up, and headed up the intercoastal waterway. This is the approximate path I took. I decided the, the waterway for now would be better after that scary experience of getting pounded by the waves on that sandbar. So I wasn't trusting my charts too well. There was another inlet here to get back out into the gulf, uh, but it didn't even look good on my old chart. So I was uh, too, being a little cautious. I decided to continue on up the waterway which in itself was, was pretty hard to navigate. Uh, 
uh, there was manatee and, and no wake zones and it curved in and out in very low areas. Uh, some places I only had like six inches beneath my keel, especially here at the bulkhead. There were birds sitting on the water just off uh, both sides of my boat. I even had to deviate from my course. I had to guess that uh, it was too low for me. And my sonar confirmed that there was very little, very little uh, clearance. So I made it through there fine. And finally, in the, in the evening, after about 30 miles up that intercoastal waterway, I made it out to the Gulf and headed straight west. This time, the conditions were just right, and I got up the nerve to throw up the head sail. Oh, it was wonderful. I sailed all day long, and then at night, I used the motor because I didn't want the wind shifting and, and, and all that. So the next day, I sailed all day again. And, uh, and then, of course, at night, I used the motor. And, uh, and then I motor sailed partially the next day because of the winds. And I got to sleep at night. I trusted my electronics enough. This was a 320 mile journey from where I left. So it took about three days. But I decided to, I was going to Pensacola, but I decided to head over to Panama City instead. It was the morning of December the 23rd, just a couple of days before Christmas. So I navigated in and rented a slip at the Panama City City Marina. It was only $50 a night, which is a half the price or more than most other places. It's like Key West was $150 a night and I stayed four nights. So it can get expensive. But I decided to spend the holidays here in Panama City. I ended up staying there two weeks. I was waiting on the weather. Uh, the winds predicting major golf storms, one behind the other. Temperatures dropped down below freezing. And my heat pump stopped working. So I went into town, used the lift, and got some fuel for my raw fuel cabin heater. That worked. After two weeks, it was finally time to go. Even though it was cold outside, and even though there was a storm predicted to come uh, right in the Gulf there by Louisiana, I should be a day ahead of it, according to my predictions. This is a 600 mile journey, and so I'm predicting anywhere between five and seven days, depending on conditions. I left in the afternoon because of low tide. About three hours later, I witnessed a beautiful sunset. After a peaceful night, the next morning had an interesting sunrise. Little did I know that those clouds that made that beautiful sunrise were going to be a problem for me later. That morning, the boat started rocking. It continued on all day long. Throughout the day, the repetition became steady, but the waves became higher. Eventually, they were reaching eight to 10 foot waves, and I wasn't in a storm yet. Key word is yet. That night when I rounded the tip of Louisiana, the storm hit. In the middle of the night, lightning and thunder. The storm was predicted to have 33 knots steady winds. So I don't know what the gusts were. I don't know what the steady wind speed was because my wind instruments are not functioning. But I know it was a heck of a storm. Three times during the night, rogue waves hit me and turned me at 180 degrees. The first time I had stepped down into the cabin and was reaching for the refrigerator and instantly my head was hitting the opposite side of the cabin. When I recovered and went back up into the cockpit, 
I had noticed I was going in the opposite direction. My autopilot was trying very hard, but I couldn't do any better, so I had to monitor for the rest of the night, even though I'd been up all day. The storm continued to the very next morning, until about noon, and finally the waves died back down to about 8 or 10 foot waves. So I have no idea how tall it really was, but I know it was a major storm and the worst I had experienced and from what I hear, what many people have experienced. The remaining portion was a relief. <laughs> I made it into the Galveston Shipping Channel where some very large tankers were sharing the very nav narrow channel. I even had uh, a Coast Guard come up behind me again and gave me a wave. Waited till I waved back and then they sped back off. So by late that morning, here I was at the Kima Boardwalk Marina for the first time. I'd never been there, even though I'd already leased the slip for a year. I was actually uh, a month late. I expected to be there a month earlier because I didn't expect to spend a month at the docks in uh, Fort Pierce and I didn't expect to spend two weeks in Panama City. After 38 days from the time I left Fort Pierce, Florida, I had arrived in Kima, Texas. If you like this video, please hit the like button and also please subscribe. Future videos will have a lot more content, a lot more action. These first videos I had to compile from the photographs I took on my cell phone during the trip because I really wasn't planning on putting it on YouTube. Thank you for watching. This is the Rookie Sailor.